guys, are we good? Put this way. Are we, no, you eat them. We don't care. Uh, I just ordered lunch too. Um, I'm leaving to the airport around 1:15. 1:15? How are we gonna talk about aliens like in less than an hour, bro? What time is it? It's fucking 12:15. Yeah. It's terrible timing. 1:25. I'll leave. You'll leave when we're done talking about aliens. If in that case, then we should get uh, we should get talking about the aliens, guys. Welcome to the Sean Whalen Show. Uh, apparently, we have to skip the pleasantries uh, with Mr. Dan Fleischman and start go straight to the aliens. Let's so go. tell us. I understand that you and your wife are alien hunters. Yes. Uh, tell us about this. By hunting, let's just clarify. I don't want to kill them. <laughs> I want to find Finding them. Finding them. I want to be friends with them. You're alien um, adventurers, yes. explorers. Talk about this. So every year for my wife's birthday, she just wants to find aliens and have like a, a <laughs> gathering where we all sit on the top of a mountain or anything that's tall and try to create lights. And try to interact with them so that they see us and pick us, you know, come over. And how's that worked out for you? Tell us about the most recent experience. So we've seen lights in the air. <laughs> we have not met any aliens as of yet, but we're not going to stop trying. Were you like this before you met uh, Casey Loves Fitness? So I've always been obsessed with aliens. I think it's egotistical and stupid of us to think that there is no other life forms. And so I think it's a silly notion uh, when you really think about how many millions of planets there are it's even weird to even say Dude, that we haven't even found the edge of the universe yet. right and so i think it's just silly and i think it's fascinating because if you think about how short of a time span we've been here it's the blink of an eye when you think about how many millions of years the world existed and whether you're believe in god the big bang theory any theory that you believe in we've been around for a long time as far as a, the galaxy, but humans have been around here for such a short period of time. And we've only actually had like smartphones or been smart humans for like 20 years. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Let's talk about this smart thing. Cause I don't know that we've gotten there yet. Yeah. We're pretty fucking dumb. <laughs> we have smart devices. We have smart devices, but yeah. we do dumb shit with them. Correct. Some of us do. Some yes. of us do smart yeah. shit with it. You know, what's funny. Like, and every, how many podcasts do you think you've done? 400 hundreds and how many of them do you talk about aliens and god and stuff like that like zero zero yeah. so that's what we, that's why we're doing this what do you why do you think people are like that and just for the record like if you don't know dan google him i mean we've been friends for years people think we get together and we talk about scheming on business and how to take over the world and literally when me you and casey and sax get together we talk about fucking aliens we right. talk about like when i'm president how she's gonna like get all the books and go to area 51 yes. and discover the whole thing why do you think people are like that from like a psychological standpoint, why do you think so many people live in this one? I look at it, it's like one dimensional. It's it's like one of my favorite books is Debbie uh, Debbie Ford, Dark Side of Light Chasers. She talks about how when we're little kids, we're born into these infinite mansions, right? right? Little kids, they pick their nose, they stick knives in outlets. Right. They don't understand like death. They they walk right up to a lion and right. they, like they don't understand it, right? Yep. And here we are, 30, 35, 40, 45 years old living in these like one dimensional, one bedroom condos. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, why do you think people are like that? Because once we start to understand it, we fear it. You watch Jaws and now you're really scared of sharks, which is an irrational fear when you think about how many mm -hmm. shark attacks actually happen in a year. It's silly. More people die from a bathroom door than sharks. <laughs> That's stop. the quote we're telling the podcast. <laughs> Literally write that down, Richie. More people die from a bathroom door than shark attacks. <laughs> so... <laughs> When you start to learn about the fear of sharks, you get scared of it. People start to hear things in the media or they read things or they go through history class and they read these books and they hear teachers tell them something and now they're scared of it. And so they either don't want to know, for, they choose ignorance to not want to know something or they're afraid of it. And so either way, they don't want to hear about it. And so they stop asking the question. That they don't want to know. They don't want to find out the truth. So oh, what yeah. do you do? I, I believe you. I mean, dude, I know this. You met Butters, my snake. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I literally had I had this irrational fear of snakes my entire life. Sure. I hated snakes. I hated them. Right. Like you see them, you want to step on them, hit yeah. them with a shovel, and I felt right. zero remorse. Right. I did not care at all. Right. My buddy Weston breeds snakes, and one day I call him, and through a long process of probably insanity, I, I'm pretty sure I was sober at the time, so it wasn't like this drunken night dial where I'm like, "Hey man, give me a snake." <laughs> yeah. I hit him up. I'm like, yo, I want a snake. He's like, well, you don't like snakes. I'm like, I know, but that's why I want one. And I had, I've shared this story many times. Like I've had this spiritual experience with this snake at the time was only like 16 inches long and is now nine feet long. You haven't seen butters recently. Whoa. Nine fucking feet, bro. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. 
But I, I, I remember very vividly the very first day that I had the snake. He's like, all right, if you want the snake to be nice and not bite people, you have to essentially play with it sure. or, or, or get it used to. I'm like, well, yeah. how the fuck? I mean, I throw a ball to my dog and my dog brings it back. How the fuck do you play with a snake? Like, you, pick it like up. you have to just handle it. Exactly. You have to pick it up and Where hold it and the whole thing. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Cool. And I remember very vividly, vividly doing this. And I had a spiritual experience, like very spiritual experience. This is pre buying my Jordans or anything. The snake's like looking at me, one of those like staring me in the eye. And I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> Don't like, bite me. <laughs> no, no, no. Like this is where I die. Right. Yep, yep. And I remember ha- like staring at the snake and realizing this snake was as scared of me as I was of it. But then I remember looking at it going, why am I scared of this thing? I, I, I'd never been bitten by one. I'd never had one like snakes on a plane wrap around me bite me try and kill me whatever whatever and all of a sudden i had this like epiphany like i had been programmed since i was a little kid sure. or had uh, i saw jaws i right. saw a snake movie right and i was terrified and hated snakes my whole life and i had no legitimate credible reason for me to not like snakes and instantly no number one i fell in love with the snake and i'm like this is my jam like right. me and butters walk around my house now and she wraps around my neck and yeah. we play and and it's just amazing but i started looking at everything i was like Holy shit. Like I have all of this social conditioning, social programming yep. around all of these things and none of it's even true. Right. I'd never actually had a bad experience with a snake to be afraid of snakes. I had just been programmed ever since I was a kid that snakes are gross, they're bad, they're crazy, whatever, whatever. It's wild. And now that's what the media does to us every day. So what do you do about that? I mean, how do you what what do you do? Cuz I'm sure you have your own fears and your own things, but like I, I realized how deep this went. Yes. Like this was deeply ingrained in my brain about money, mm-hmm. about love, right. connection, like heartache. Don't give your heart to a woman. Don't go all in. It's going to hurt. So just play 50%. You know, don't, don't, don't put your money into deals growing a company right. because you could lose. Right. Like this is literally like from, from an early age, what I was programmed with, what you were programmed mm-hmm. with. What did you do? How did you do? How did you overcome it? How do you overcome it? I, I throw myself into it and I study it and I immerse myself. And so when I found out the real Tarzan was moving to my house <laughs> and bringing all these snakes and like really big large snakes. snakes, big snakes, I was never a snake guy. Yeah. I never held a snake in my life. I've been around them and I had an irrational fear of them, but I never like ever thought, you know what? I'm going to pick up that snake. Never right. crossed my mind. Right. Now I wear them. <laughs> Eight feet, 14 feet, 19 feet. My mom wears them. My mom had never held a snake before. And so what I immersed myself was I just started studying everything about the snakes that were going to be living at, next door to me at my at the ranch. So I'm literally Googling everything and I'm reading about it and how rare that they bite and blah, 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 why they would. And if you feed them first and they're, they're not hungry, they wouldn't even consider biting you. Even right. if you held something in front of them, right. you can hold food in front of them. They don't care. And so I just studied it. Same thing I studied about business and love and sex and everything in between. If you become an expert at something you're going to have that irrational fear would go away. Same thing. If you think about it, the number one fear in our society is actually speaking on stage, mm-hmm. speaking in public. Right. You know how rational that is? Mm-hmm. And so when people ask me this, the, I think that's get asked more than almost anything about how are you not nervous on stage? I only talk about stuff that I know. Right. If I were to go up there and start trying to teach about how to make cheese, I have no idea how to make cheese. Yeah, but you want to know something. <laughs> I know you well enough and have known you for a long enough time that guys like you and I, if I said, get up on stage and talk about that goldfish bag for an hour, you could. Sure. You could. And you'd have people laughing and you'd have people crying and it'd be amazing. And you'd be like data driven, like, let's (laughs) talk about the goldfish bag, right? right? So by becoming an expert in the goldfish, the cheese, the business, whatever that thing is, it removes your fear. And so I constantly tell people, if you're going to go on stage or you're going to speak publicly or just make video content, just get really, really, really smart. Go study everything about it, whether that's your fear of snakes, whether that's your fear of speaking on stage, whether it's your fear of business, investing, et cetera. Get really, really smart. Google everything about it. Google everything about the competitors, the good, the bad, the ugly, the lawsuits. Find out everything, and all of a sudden, you won't be scared. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the, the – I tell people all the time about – that irrational dream that we all had as we were kids about standing up in front of the class naked. Mm-hmm. We all had the dream, right? right? We all had the nightmare. You wake up, you're like, oh shit, I'm naked from the class. Well, if you reverse engineer it and think to myself, okay, well, if that's what I'm afraid of, what if I just go stand up in front of the class naked? Like voluntarily do it. Even mm-hmm. though I'm terrified, I'm probably going to shake. I'm probably going to shit my pants. I'm going to cry. I'm going to like lose my mind. But once you do it, then 
it's done. It's kind of like how do you, you can't be afraid of it again. It's like once you swim with sharks and you realize sharks really don't give a fuck about they don't you. Care about you at all. Are, snakes are not going to eat you. They're not right. going to wrap you up and kill you. It's kind of like, oh, wait a second. I've looked at it now from this perspective of like, how do I challenge myself over and over and over and over again yep. to like go into all of these places that I'm afraid of to conquer the fear, to overcome them. And, and through time, would you say it's become easier? Oh, absolutely. Because now I know going in what it takes for me as a human to get past something. Mm -hmm. I went and swam with sharks. Yeah. I studied everything about these sharks. Like, hey, these type of sharks don't bite humans. Let's go. If I knew that they could bite humans and I know they rarely do it, there's still be some fear. But when I research and find out they don't bite humans, let's go. Yeah. This snake's not going to bite me. Put it on me. Let's go. And so I do that in every aspect of my life as I just obsess myself and research about something. It doesn't take a long time. Mm -hmm. You can do things in minutes. You, know? yeah. you spend an hour on something, you're going to become an expert nowadays because totally. the, the internet's amazing. Um, but in, in general, that's how I get past things. I just study everything about it. Yeah. What are you afraid of? Um, like, what, what are you afraid of, like, personally? There, there's only one main thing is I'm afraid of running out of time. Yeah. I have a lot of stuff to do. And I, I have in my ego is I don't know if other people are going to do it. And I want to make it so that other people can do it when I'm gone. Because I'm also rational about the fact that when I'm gone, I'll be forgotten. And whether it's one century or two centuries, nobody's going to remember me. Lines not shaped or anything in between. Mm -hmm. It all fades away just over course of time and whatever. And so I don't need the legacy for me as a name from the ego perspective, but I want stuff, good stuff to be happening while I'm gone, even if it has nothing to do with me or in my, in my name, if that makes sense. I just want people to be doing charity when I'm gone. I want people to throw toy drives when I'm gone. I want them to feed the homeless when I'm gone. And I want to be the one to do it. And I feel like that the clock is ticking as I get 40 and I'm 41 and this year I'll be 42. And I'm like, fuck, I don't know if I'm going to be 70, 80. I'm not going to be That's 100. Wild. I don't think I'm going to be 100. Right? Why not? Because the way I live. There's right? a lot of smart people though. They're going to come up with a pill, a thing, yes. a chamber or whatever, whatever. You're yeah. like, fine, I'll take it. We're, we are the generation that like the, 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 the kids before us, the kids that are now 10, 20, 30 years old, I think they're going to be 100, 120, 150 years old. The kids that are just being born, I think it'll be 150, will be normal. Because we didn't have tens of thousands of gyms when you and I grew up. Yeah. I barely remember 24-hour fitness existing. Right. We didn't have health food when we grew up. It didn't exist. <laughs> health food, what are you talking about? We had McDonald's, Jack in the Box, Burger King. That's yeah. what we survived on. There was soda. Yeah. There was no smoothies. What was a smoothie when you yeah. were 13? Yeah. It didn't exist. It was a milkshake. That was it. Exactly. And so I, I just think about the fact that now our society, there's so many gyms and so many health food places and so many doctors and so many smart people. It's just like, it's a different era. You look at Jordan versus LeBron. Yeah. LeBron has scientists that know to the percentage of his body fat weight, uh, how much he should eat, how many calories, his blood vessels. And th what do you think Jordan had? Yeah. Blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. And Nikes. That was it. That's it. <laughs> so I read something the other day about him because I'm not a huge basketball fan, but somebody said something about uh, how he went to college. Like Jordan went to college. So there was like a four year span that LeBron didn't go to college, went right. straight in the NBA, that yeah. where. Of course, everybody's going to be like talking shit about it. Sure. Well, it, I mean, it is, it's an, it's an amazing feat what he accomplished, but of course. there's always something to be said for it. Yes. I just look at the fact of where our society was just 20 years ago. Yeah. We didn't have smartphones. It's crazy, isn't it? 12 years ago, you didn't have a smartphone. Dude, I had a pager. <laughs> exactly. Had a, did you ever have pagers? Of course. Blackberry. Yeah. I say Blackberry now from stage and you can see half the audience is like, well, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, is that, is that for lunch? Like, yeah. What is that? Yes. So I, I just think the fear I have is I'm going to run out of time. Yeah. And I think about it every day. That's why I do so much stuff like bam, bam, mm -hmm. bam, bam, all the time, nonstop, relentlessly until I can't. Yeah. And when I can't, I'll, that's okay. But I, along the way, I won't live a life where I just chill down and watch Netflix. Like I can't even fathom it. Mm -hmm. Like I, I get tense thinking, like you've seen me post before, like you couldn't pay me $1 billion to go sit on the beach forever. Mm. I physically like tense up thinking about it. What do you do to relax? Poker. I like poker. <laughs> There's nothing relaxing about having a million dollars on the table. And I've seen you play high stakes poker before. Yeah, this week was I've been, big. I've been with you in the big. Beverly Hills, <laughs> in Beverly Hills, like when there's millions and millions and millions of dollars yeah. on the table. Um, I'm very calm in the chaos. Yeah. Like in those moments uh, where there, literally on Tuesday, there was an, a hand. It was the biggest hand I ever played in my life. Really? No shit. Multiple millions of dollars in one hand. And it was a culmination of like, 14 hours now it's like three in the morning and it's a very famous celebrity and interesting business characters and the hand all of a sudden becomes 
multiple millions of dollars in one hand <laughs> and I'm up against one of the most famous humans in the world. And after the hands over, everyone just kind of looked at me like, how are you so calm? Did you win? I didn't win that hand. You didn't? I didn't win that. How hand. much money did you lose? Oh, I won that night, but I didn't win that hand. Oh, got it. It's a long story. <laughs> uh, well, long, that'll take a whole podcast. Uh, We're here. We have time. <laughs> We're going to, Hey, somebody book him a different flight. Okay. <laughs> uh, and so in that moment, I was a 20 to one favorite. There's two cards that this person can win with. There's 39 cards that I can win with. Okay. One of those two cards came. Mm. And it's not that I don't think about it because I analyze the hand. Could I have done anything different? No. I want to be in the situation. I want to be like 60, 40, 70, 30. To so be a 95% favorite, well, that's my dream, yeah. especially in this for all the money, right? Um, and so I, I think about why am I calm in it? Because I studied so much that this is the moment that I waited for, the perception of why he tried to bluff me, why I did this, why that did that. I wouldn't change any of those things. Yeah. I analyze them to know if I should, and I'm aware that there's times I should change something or you know, adjust based on the player, the situation, how much money's involved, et cetera. But my heart rate didn't change at all. And then we played for four more hours and I got all the money back and more, not all from that one hand, but I look back at it because we talked, I've been getting text messages about this hand over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And, over. and um, I don't remember a hand ever where I won or lost and my heart rate changed. Hmm. And it's not that the money's not impactful. This is a lot of money, right? It doesn't matter how much money you have. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Even to this person who's got hundreds of millions of dollars. They were sweating, right? Like it was big. And I stay calm in the chaos because I have to do everything that I can do prior to that moment so that as long as I studied and I practiced and I trained and I wasn't slacking off in that moment, if I made the right decision, the cards come as they come. Mm -hmm. And I look at that in every aspect of my life. We have business partners. I had a business partner where everything was great for nine years and then they stole a ton of money from me. I wouldn't change the nine years and I wouldn't change sure. the amazing relationship we had along the way. Another one, five years, blah, blah, blah. So everything's great. And they stole $630,000 from me. It doesn't mean I don't, I don't change the things along yeah. the way and the experience and journey along the way. I have to be the best version of me and the best brain I can be along the way. And then the cards fall as they fall. Yeah. How did you get like that? I, Cause I've been around you a ton. You're, you're always, you seem to be like a single gear guy. Like, cause I want to ask you about what gets you riled up, but how did you get like that? Have you always been like that? I think so. Cause I don't remember not being calm. I think because I had a lot of deaths early My roommate passed away. Very famous. One of the most, second biggest NFL player of all time gets in a car crash and it was living with me. Mm -hmm. Another dear friend passed away. My dad passed away. Another friend passed away. Like seriously, like close circle where most people have like zero to two deaths in their twenties. Right. I had 12 and then 13 and then 14 and young guys, Yeah. you know, people that are 25 years old, 32 years old. And so when you start to lose people early or at any age in your life, you start to think about more, your like mortality lifespan, what matters, what's important. And that's why I just don't do drama, gossip, chaos. Mm -hmm. you're, gonna, you're not gonna bother me, we're, we're gonna be dead soon. Yeah. Like, I say that on stage often. Like, yeah. if a bird pooped on my head while I'm on stage, I would clean it off. I'm not embarrassed in front of you guys. Yeah, keep going. The kid just pees in front of, on the, I'll, I'll clean it up in front of you guys. Yeah. I have no ego to this stuff. Yeah. We're all gonna be gone soon. And you guys aren't gonna be at my funeral. And I've said it bluntly at events often because mm -hmm. I want them to realize I don't care. My job is to do as much good as I can and be as good as I can. As long as I do that, the cars fall as they fall. Yeah. Dude, I vibe with that. I've been saying that more and more and more. I, f I feel that way. Like the, the, the level of embarrassment, like shit that used to bother me 10 years ago, I'm like, I kind of smile at it. And I'm right. like, really? You know what I mean? Like you could literally hand me a goldfish bag and say, go talk to 10,000 people about it for an hour, but cool, sure. let's go. Let's go. Like there, there's not like, oh my God, I gotta get ready. I gotta get, is, is my clothes, are my clothes good? Am I good? I'd be like, yeah, let's go. Like, let's do it. Like there's, a, there's something really. Freeing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Freeing, like very liberating. And I, I don't think you said this a minute ago, you think about it every day. I do too. Like I think about dying every day, yep. but I don't think it, about it in a negative way or a like, oh, it, it, it inspires me. Yep. It motivates me. It invigorates right. me. It's like, if this was the last podcast that we had, what would I want to talk about? Like, what would I want to talk to Dan Fleischman about? Yep. It's like, yeah, okay, well, here's the questions and the, and the branding and the books and the money and the business. And where do I find you on social media? If, if I can't, 
if I have to tell you that, like, you're a fucking idiot. Like, go to social media and right. find his ass, right. right? It's like the data, like, it's all here. It's it's kind of like we have these these insanely futile relationships and just, like, conversations that yep. – do they drive you nuts every now and again? Oh, for sure. I don't do them. <laughs> I don't do them. I have 1,700 missed texts right now. Uh, I have no emotion to it. I think I've, you've got me beat there. Let's I see have, how many I have. But I have no emotion to it. I, I have 143. Used, I used to care. No, I used to care. Yeah. And then people would see me at an event or at a dinner like, oh, you didn't respond to me. I'm like, <laughs> it's mathematically impossible for me to respond to everybody. Yeah. I, have, I just tell you I didn't want to. I have 800 texts a day. I have hundreds of emails a day, hundreds of DMs a day, hundreds of this, hundreds of that. It's not mathematically possible. Yeah. I have no emotion to it. I used to care. Mm -hmm. And I realized just the sheer math of it. And it's going to get worse, not better. And so I'm going to get worse, not better when it comes to that. Yeah. But I'm, my heart rate's not going to change. Yeah. What does, what gets your heart rate up? Like what, what, okay, here's a question. I don't know, do, I don't know how to do these podcasts. I think I'm doing pretty fucking good because people listen to it. They say I'm great, but I don't know. Like, do you I like it. plan questions or shit? Like what gets you, what pisses you off? So you're actually going to like this. It's injustice. Tell me politics. Tell me, tell me Hillary Clinton. <laughs> no, what pisses me off is injustice. Yeah. When someone does something mean to someone else on purpose, yeah. especially when they don't have to, I, I mean, I get, the only time I've ever been in fights is over other people because of injustice. The only time I've been in legal situations or battles is over someone else over injustice. Mm -hmm. The only time I like get, like I've yelled is over injustice. Yeah. And so, it really frustrates me and obviously you stand up for it a lot with with the government injustice and Fauci injustice things like that like the public injustice mm -hmm. I get I don't get as riled up as you about those things because I don't know that I could change those things mm -hmm. and I don't know that my voice would change those things because the corruption continues and if you it's like whack-a-mole yeah, we, we, if up. we whacked Fauci then Hillary's still there we sure. whack Hillary and then yeah. the next guy you know that doesn't change and it never will change because it's power and money right and so you can talk about that for seven hours but to me when it happens and I can change it or I do feel like I can fight for it or I feel like I can help something or I can stop something or I'm all in yeah. I'm Batman let's go like yeah. I have no fear of it I'm ready to fucking I don't want to die over it but I'll die over it like yeah. I'm ready for it and so the only times I ever see myself get tensed up is over something that is solvable, that is not needing to happen. Right. And injustice happening is extremely frustrating. I cannot, I physically can't stand it. And the thing I get upset about, I try to stay calm over, is when my friends or, or even acquaintances don't follow through with what they could be. I can't stand it. Mm -hmm. If I know you can be great and you just kind of exist, I, I don't want to be friends with you. And that's frustrating because I do want to be friends with you and I know you can be great and it doesn't take much for you to do it. That like really bothers me. We have mutual friends that I, yeah. I feel that way about. Like they just get by or they do good and then they chill for two years and I physically can't stand it because they can run up the scoreboard. Yeah. And I want them to run up the scoreboard and I can't stand that part. And so I, that does get me upset to the point of I've been really blunt this last year and a half with my friends. Yeah. Some of our closest friends. I have, I like a full fledged yell at them or texting like capital letters and exclamation points. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if you get a text from Dan, it's capital letters. Like you're fucked. Yeah. You better pay attention. Yeah. But I, I, I do it a lot and I do it really fast. Yeah. If I hear something happening that's unjust or this person not doing what they could be, or I set up two people and this person slacked off or didn't respond. I'm, I don't care. Yeah. I'm in. And I'm blunt. I'm I'm Sean Whalen blunt. Like, yeah. I'm I'm gonna capital letter exclamation point you. <laughs> Dude, I, I remember as a little kid, I there's something about that seeing something like, like with bullies. You know, I've I've had the same philosophy with bullies ever since I was a little kid. Like the only way to stop a bully is just beat the shit out of yeah, them. Punch one nose. You know, I remember my cousin. He was deaf, and I remember one time somebody making fun of him like because he yeah. couldn't talk. Like right. he just he orated sounds and the whole thing. And I remember when I was a little kid, how fucking irate that made me. Like I went, no, when I yeah. punched kids, one of the yeah. very first fights I ever, yep. it wasn't really a fight. I punched him one time and that was it. Right. Nothing happened other than he got pissed off, whatever. But I remember thinking to myself, like there was something inside of me that like, I didn't, I, I didn't like that. I yep. didn't want to feel that. I didn't, I, I felt for him in a way that like made me uncomfortable and I didn't want to feel that way. Right. You know what I mean? I think I, I, I can't think of very many things beyond like what, what you're saying right now that really get me in that space other than that type of injustice. Yeah. I look at the bigger picture though. And sure. yeah, I agree with the whack-a-mole, but I still get 
pissed off when but, I see. But our, our, our society, our country, our world needs the loud voices. They yeah. need Sean Whalen. They need Andy Frisella. They need people to be the loud voice that yeah. a lot of people can't or won't. We, we need it. I just choose to fight the battles that I know that I can win at. Yeah. And I, I want to like get people to actually take action. Yeah. And I've heard the frustrations from you and Andy, et cetera, is that you've got millions and millions of people listening and, and you don't see them taking action. It's hard, man. It's hard. It's, it's, frustrating, it's frustrating as fuck. It really is. I, I, I had an experience and, and you might tell me it's a bad idea from a business perspective, <laughs> but this last weekend I saw very clearly that I was supposed to close lines then. I mean, I've had the lion's den for eight years. It's made millions and millions and millions of dollars, like from a business pr perspective. But I saw very clearly that, that, that I feel like I'm pushing rope. And you think about pushing rope, it's like the most maddening thing. Like when you're trying to progress something forward and you're just pushing and it's just, and, and there's, I think I've gotten to a place in, in life where it's like, if I have to tell you being fat is a problem, why am I even having this conversation with you? Why am I in a place where I'm having this conversation? I want to roll with killers. I want to roll with people that realize like if I die tomorrow, today was the fucking dopest day ever. But we think that way. Yep. We talk that way. We talk about things that are meaningful and impactful. We live meaningful and impactful lives. We don't live as shit bags in relationships. We don't treat our wives like shit or our friends like shit. Like I've just gotten to a place where it's like, and I'm not saying that that's about what my lion's den is or whatever else. I just feel like there's such a big fucking opportunity and there's a big calling right now to truly step into a place of showing people what's possible in a much bigger space, in a much bigger light. Because you really think about it, like if today was the last day, like did you live today as the greatest fucking day? Yeah. There's so many people that just feel like we have years and years and times and millennia and my 401k and my IRA and my retirement plan and, oh, shit, did you hear about Bobby died? He was 49. He had a fucking heart attack. It's crazy, yeah. I mean, it's it's wild shit. I had, a, I had a really, really, really spiritual experience the other day. Scott Nan, the artist, you know you know who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in Mexico. We went on a cru cruise for two weeks for Christmas, and it was great. And the whole thing, a week after she gets home, she... Her leg stops working. Her arm stops working. She goes to the hospital. They do a scan on her brain. She's a huge freaking tumor in her brain. And it's like, what? Right. I get a text at 5 a.m. from Scott, like, emotionally. He's like, Ann has a tumor in his brain. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense, right? I don't, I don't think about it. And as Saxony and I were driving to the hospital, I, I remember vividly looking at her and turning and saying, I could have a tumor in my brain right now mm -hmm. and not even know about it. Right. You know what I mean? And, like, it's that reality, it's that mortality that, yep. that causes me to, like, live the way that I do. And, and I think you would yeah. say the same thing. Yeah. I applied to meet with Doc Amen, the brain guy, three weeks ago. I don't have anything I physically know Who? that's wrong. He's really big on Instagram. He's a doctor that does, like, Aoki and everything. Is he the guy that does all the scans and shit? Mm -hmm. Like, scans your brain, scans mm -hmm. your body, tries to find cancer and the whole he, thing? He has huge books, huge podcasts. My everything. buddy just recommended me. Is he in L.A.? Is he in California? Yeah. Okay, somebody yeah. just, I'll have to see after yeah, the podcast. Doc, Doc, a, a, Doc Amen. There's Anyways, no literally, like, last month, I just applied to go meet with him because I was like, I want to know. Yeah. Because if I find something, whether it's now or 10 years from now, 50 years from now, or, or hopefully never, I want to know so that I, when people say, do you want to know when you would die? My answer is yes. Really? Yeah. People always say, would you want to know? Yeah, I do want to know because there's a lot of stuff I want to get done. <laughs> so it doesn't scare me. To, yeah. I know I'm going to die. So the difference of me dying when I'm 80 or 72, it's sure. just math. Right. It's just math and time. Yeah. So How I much gotta, can I get done between now and then? Yes, let's go. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that question comes up a lot. And I understand why people's reasoning of why they wouldn't mm -hmm. from like an esoteric and spiritual reason. Sure. And like, I just want to live my life. No, I want to know. Well, I would want to know too. I want to know. Yeah. I got stuff to do. I know. Like uh, I'm going to do a lot of things different if I know it's in four years rather than four months. Mm -hmm. A lot different. And so, or hopefully 40 years. Uh, the point of that is we, we live in a world now where you have access to information. Mm -hmm. There are doctors that can figure stuff out. You can find things out. We also live in a... They were, you guys were on a cruise and a few weeks later, someone in their 40s is all of a sudden is like sick. Yeah. And could be gone. Yeah. That's the stuff that's stuck in me is that I have multiple football players, dear friends, oh, yeah. very famous guys. Girl gets pushed. I have girls that have been pushed over a balcony and dead. Playboy playmate, dead. Boyfriend killed her, put her in a trunk. Like these are stuck in my head of like friend friends, yeah. clients, et cetera, that now I can't even count. I don't know if it's 20, 30, 40 friends that have passed away that are 20 to 40 years old, not counting yeah. the family members. And so to me, death is so prevalent around me. Not that they're like, uh, weird freak accidents or like I'm not saying it in that fashion I just mean that because I know so many people by definition the math adds up yeah if I know 6,000 people in my cell phone 
50 people die, it's a tiny percentage, but 50 people dying is a lot. From, sure. You know? And so I think about death, mortality, et cetera, every day. Yeah. What should people do? Like, I mean, if you were to, if this was the last podcast you were talking about, forget branding, forget money, forget scaling the business. Like for somebody who's listening to this, who's living in fear, they're fear, they're, most people are afraid of their own fucking shadow. Yeah. Most people are afraid that, of making a mistake. Most people are afraid of like making any, any mistakes ever. So they just live in a constant state of being paralyzed. The people yeah. are just paralyzed. Like, what do you tell people? What would you tell people? So the first thing is just get started. I literally put that on Ed Milet's post this, this morning. I said, whenever people ask me that, I answer one way and one way only. Just get started. Yeah. Now, once you get past that part, the scary part, which is jumping in the pool or you know just getting started, is you are going to fail along the way. There are going to be failures. There are going to be mess ups, no matter how huge you are. <clears throat> Look at Facebook. Zuckerberg's got a multi-bajillion dollar company with tens of thousands of employees. <laughs> he's bought and closed more companies than anybody. Yeah. It just doesn't work. And he's got 2 billion users and he still can't make this work and make that work, make that work. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to stop doing it. It's the same concept when people talk about like, oh, when I was a kid, if I would have, I kept trying to walk as a toddler and I couldn't walk. I didn't just say, I'm, I'm not going to walk. Done, yeah. Right. You've got to freaking go for it. If you know going in, you're going to have failures and you know going in, there's going to be problems. You know going in that you might get sued. You might have a situation. You might have a business partner to go bad. Well, if you know going in, you're not going to be surprised or scared or sad when it happens. Right. It's just part of the business part. People are worried what people are going to think about them. Oh, I don't want my friends to hear my restaurant didn't work out or my sales went down or my clothing line didn't do this or blah, blah, blah. They're going through the same thing now right. in the past or in the future. The right. same thing's going to happen to them too. Who cares? It literally doesn't matter. But if you don't do it and then you wake up and you're 72 years old and you could have created Lions Not Sheep Clothing, mm -hmm. or you could have created the Lions Den, or you could have done events, or you could have done a documentary, that will eat your life. Yeah. The regret, the resentment, will, that can be super frustrating. And so the very notion of our society of like, work relentlessly until you're 65 and save a bunch of money and then live your life. I don't want to live my life when I'm 74. Live it now. Yeah. I have kids now. They're young <laughs> now. I want to play now. I want a snowmobile now. I want to surf right. now. I want to go to the beach now. Yeah. Like snowmobiling at 74 is not going to be the same. At <laughs> and so uh, I, I implore people to just get started and not be afraid of what happens. Yeah. The good, bad, and the ugly. The way you can protect yourself is you don't have to go all in. You don't have to. I'm not telling you to quit your job and go start your company tonight. But you can start your company tonight and not quit your job and work from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. every night. Right. And I promise you, you work three or four hours a week. I'm sorry, three or four hours a night times seven. Oof. Yeah. 20 hours a week adds up real quick. That's 7,000 hours in a year. Like you can get a lot of stuff mm -hmm. done just by working three hours, five hours, four hours each night. Yeah. And so, and then when you got enough money, now you can pull the ripcord and go tell your boss to screw off. Right. Yeah. So I say all these things because the main thing people are afraid of is failure and rejection. The rejection part is irrelevant and the failure parts irrelevant. Cause if you didn't try, I guarantee you, you're going to resent yourself later. Mm -hmm. Dude, I think remorse is, I have one nightmare. Like I don't have a nightmare really about a whole lot of other things anymore. The single thing that keeps coming to me that I've had over and over and over again, especially the last couple of years, is I'm laying on my deathbed. And no matter how much money I have, no matter how much fame, acumen I have, I can't buy back yesterday. Right. I have this nightmare over and mm -hmm. over and over again that God put ideas in my brain, passion, my soul, right here, right now, today. What's today? February 10th, right here, right now. I have these things and I fucking squandered them. I did nothing with them because I was afraid what you would say or I was afraid what some dingleberry with a freaking troll account would say or it's laugh at me yep. or LOL or bring up my past or something yep. like that. I legitimately have nightmares about this, man. I have nightmares that one day I will run out of options and I can't think of anything more terrifying than not having an option not being able to go to Costa Rica, not being able to go here, not being able to have a conversation, not being able to see my kids, play with my kids. Like if that doesn't drive you, if that doesn't drive the average person, ever, anybody, whoever you are, like think that through, like legitimately vision it. Think about it. I mean, it's fucking terrifying. And the other thing I would say to people is to do more. Yeah. There's what just, do you mean? What do you mean? There's just so much time that we waste on like crap. Yeah. And everyone's like, I'm so busy. No, you're fake. You're fake busy. <laughs> You're fake busy. Sean's busy. Dan's mm -hmm. busy. We throwing events, conferences, multi-million dollar brands, clothing brands, investment. Yeah. We're busy. Right. 
I'm not saying that everybody's not busy, sure. but you're not that busy. Yeah. There's a lot of time you're watching Netflix. There's a lot of time you're scrolling through social media and consuming. There's a lot of time you're going to do something that is wasting your time. You're going to do the dry cleaning for 90 minutes when someone else could do it for you. And people are like, oh, I, I, I'm just going to go do it. I'm going to go guard. I'm going to lawn. Gardening. Grocery shopping. Yep. Yeah. If you're mowing the lawn when you could pay someone 15 bucks, mm -hmm. that means you're worth 15 bucks. Yep. You might be some hotshot lawyer like, I'm going to save money by mowing the lawn myself. No, you're literally losing three exactly. bucks. Literally losing money. Yeah. And I look at that in all aspects of our life is that you have time to do more and you don't because you fill up these hours with like errands. Mm -hmm. Is it really that? Do you need to go do the dry cleaning? Does it matter that much? You probably have 300 pieces of clothing you've never worn. They just sit there. Wear yep. that. Yep. You always say, oh, I wish I was going to start my fishing lure company. You never start your fishing lure company because when I get to this money or when I get to this time, why? <laughs> start it. Yeah. And also research more. There is infinite content about the thing that you like. You want to be really good at basketball? Go study it. You want to be really, you want to be really good at fishing? Go study it. You want to be really good at business? Go study it. Like you have access to all this free content nonstop. Just get really, really smart about something and it'll make you want to do more. <laughs> I'm literally, I'm not, I'm not ignoring it. I promise. I, uh, I said, I've said this for years because people say, and you've heard this. How many times have you heard people say, how do I, how do I, how do I, how do I start the business, do the deal, scale the thing. And I, and I remember years ago, almost as like a mockery. Cause I was like pissed off with people saying that to me over and over again. Cause I've literally used this phone every fucking day to figure shit out. Right. Like, I don't know how to do something. I fucking Google it. Google I literally, it. I'm on Google so much right. to figure things out. Yeah. And I remember somehow I went down the rabbit hole and I Googled how to build a spaceship and right here, NASA design a spaceship and their actual blueprints to build a right. manned spaceship. Now, am I going to get all of the parts at, fucking home sure. depot probably right. not right. but there are literal blueprints yep. from nasa nasa.gov like this is nasa they've put blueprints online of how to build a fucking spaceship right. how do i scale a business how do i start a business how do i find products from china right. how do i find products from louisiana type how, those exact words how do i make beer right. how do i make whiskey yep. how do i start a vodka brand yep. how do i start a t-shirt company yep. i mean it's literally it's fascinating to me What's really crazy to me, though, is, is how little this existed when we were coming up, if you will. Like, back in the day, like, yeah. you remember, like, we were joking about um, AOL the other day, like, <laughs> and you were like, please connect, please connect. And yeah. then when it did, it was like winning the jackpot, like, Literally. fuck yeah. And yeah. then you're praying that it didn't just drop you and disconnect yeah. kind of thing, because then you had to start all over again. Yeah. Okay, I have to sh shift gears. I have to ask you a question. And I don't know why this just came to me. If you were president, what would be the very first thing that you did as president? Wow. I know that you have limited time. And I really want to keep going, but I'm going to honor. I'm back all the time. I'm, I'm going to honor, honor the hour. I'll be back next Sunday. Murph, I can do it again. You know what I'm saying? I could keep going. But if you were president, okay, and I know that you love to talk about politics. Yes. We talk about politics all the time. Yep. He really, we really don't ever, but we <laughs> should. We, we do, but not like publicly, okay? If you were president. What would be the very first thing that you would do? Day one, we are elected. Dan Fleischman, we already know Casey would be like taking the first jet to Area 51. Yes. And you'd probably go with her. But you have official business to handle. Yes. Day one, what would you do? Everything about our country would be treated like a business. And so on day one, efficiencies would start. I would start going through all these old rules from 100 years ago, 200 years from now, things that are unjust or silly or big waste of time and that were 90 pages or 300 pages, and everything becomes one pages. Literally everything. Mm -hmm. The rules for states, cities, counties, and for the country go down to one page each. So now, and you wanna build an extra bedroom at your house, you don't have to wait nine months for it. Inefficiencies go away across the board, because to me, Treating our country like a business because it is a business. Mm -hmm. It totally is. And we're a failing business, sadly, that owes bazillions of dollars to who knows who. But we're in this massive debt to some magical person or magical country <laughs> or magic, whatever. And the inefficiencies are at scale. And so my true deep, deep, deep rooted answer is there is no reason that we have this many politicians that make this, this much money. There is no reason that. There's so much staff at so many of these office buildings. There is no reason that we still have to do wet signatures. 
That is mind boggling. I had to do wet signature yesterday because the government says you got to do <laughs> what the DocuSign is amazing. It's yeah. 2023. Yeah. The amount of money wasted because I had to do a wet signature is mind boggling. Mm -hmm. I had to drive somewhere, sign something, get a notary, send it to someone. They send it to the government. There's multiple employees of the government. DocuSign is amazing. And so I, I look at that across the entire country. How many, not hundreds of billions, how many trillions, trillions. of dollars are wasted because everything takes so long because it's a human element. Now, I'm not saying I wanted our place to be run by robots or AI. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying it should not take a year for someone to get a permit to put up a bedroom or a stoplight yeah. or anything in between. The efficiency is like, it takes 15 years to expand a freeway. Why? <laughs> Do you know how fast they built the wind? Two oh, yeah. years. Yeah. Remember when they wanted to build Encore? Oh, one year later. Mm -hmm. These are multi-billion dollar, humongous, gorgeous facilities. You're telling me the US government, the best military in the world, the smartest people in the world, blah, 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 blah. We can't build a freeway in less than 15 years? Mm -hmm. That's insanity. Like actual insanity. And it comes from inefficiencies. We're paying way too much for every single aspect of it. We're paying way too many people. To like your cousin's the contractor because that's your cousin. Your friend does this. Your friend, like the inefficiencies happen at scale in our country and it's all solvable. And with some really smart business people in a room for a week or two with a bunch of whiteboards, you would fix so many things. Whiteboard. Did, hey, did you guys know it? I'd be willing to bet we should have done this. I bet you his heart rate just went up a little bit. Murph, what do you think? I think his heart rate, he, he got a little bit more animated. We have this all on film, just so you know. I think politics so next, is your chance. On Sunday, we come back. I'm well, going to do, do it. I'm going to get a heart rate monitor. I'll be on it. Dude, dude, I've said the same thing. If you, can't, if you can't explain the business, the deal, the tax code on a whiteboard, it's too complex. Yeah. I mean, do you, do you think ta flat tax is a good thing? Of course. The, the, the idea, the notion that... Right now, when you're paying 43% in certain tax brackets, and then in California, paying 12, 13, 14% for state tax, it would make sense if then we saw the resolution of it. But I still drive through California over potholes. Mm -hmm. I still go past thousands of, biz of homeless people on Hollywood Boulevard, mm -hmm. in Beverly Hills, the fanciest city in the country, in the planet. There's homeless people everywhere. Yeah. That's insanity. Yeah. Because I know how many billions of dollars go to California state tax. And so when I talk about the whiteboards and the business and the efficiency of it, the business part of it leads to the politics part of it is that people want to fix the homelessness and they want to fix the, the yeah, city. They want to right. fix a businessman. That's why I liked the concept of Trump. I, obviously there's things that we, I don't like about him, but I love the idea of a businessman business, right. being there that's straightforward and, and acts quickly. That part I love about him more than anybody. Ever, yeah. Right. But would it be fascinating to go see uh, a 55 year old business person go in there not an 80 year old 55 year old business person like let's just say a, like a mark cuban type character goes in there and treats it like a business with not chiefs of staff the real staff cfo ceos mm -hmm. like take away the politics name and treat this like a, a ceo of a corporation our country within one year would it would be the biggest facelift you ever saw mm -hmm. okay so when i run for president when i win what job do you want? And you can't say nothing. Don't say nothing. I, you definitely, can't want, say, I definitely want. <laughs> what job do you want when I'm president? I want to be the chief operating officer. The COO? So you'd, have, you'd be the first COO in the United States of America. Yeah. That'd be pretty gangster. And I'll get you a special yeah. plaque. We'll put it on your And if you let me, I want, I want two titles. What? COO and CMO. I want to be the chief marketing officer. Done. Because our country needs better marketing globally. Dude, we would crush that. We would fucking crush that. I'd be doing lives from the Oval Office. We'd be like, yo, check this out. Yeah. Putin's here. We're going to go. Up, motherfucker? Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. I would bring back. I, I had an idea. I think that the president should have someone, should have an American citizen shadow him every day. You pick a different right. American, shows up at 9 a.m. in the morning, rolls with him. I mean, hey, if you got a secret meeting, put some earmuffs on him, whatever, whatever. Right. Most shit ain't secret anyways. No. Like, let's be serious about yeah. it. But an American gets to fucking shadow his ass every single day, 365 days a year, done and done. I think it's a good idea. I think it's fun. I think I would, I would do that. Like with, when I'm president, I would literally be like, all right, get on a waiting list. You got to submit a 30 second video. We'll pick everybody out. 365 days a year. Somebody just rolls with me. We're eating lunch together. We're flying on air force one together. That's we're awesome. doing shit together. You show up in Russia for some freaking foreign affairs kind of shit. Be like, yo, this is Bob Johnson. He's from Tennessee. He's a fucking farmer. Like, what do you think about this? Bob, what do you think? I think that would be so fucking dope. Because America can help fix the rest of the world too. hundred percent. We have the efficiencies. It, 
Whenever people say, oh, I'm going to leave the country, blah, blah, screw the country. <laughs> Have you been to any other country before? None of them leave, by the way. No, none, none, of, them. none of them. And it's, it's funny. It's like this whole virtue, like, oh, my God, I'm going to move to Canada. I'd be like, oh, you're uh, still here. <laughs> hey, Trump left a long time ago. You're still fucking here. I'd be like, oh, that's right. You don't want to leave Beverly you Hills and the Rolls Royce. You you're not going to go to Colombia in a third world country. Yes. Got it. In, in Canada, where you couldn't leave your house for a year because yeah. it's ty- tyranny. They're like. People say those things and don't realize actually living in other countries. No, dude. The amount of injustice that happens in those countries where you better not say anything over there because they'll just they'll kill you. Kill you or put you in jail. They'll fucking kill like you. Like that. Yeah. With no remorse. And so I believe that hopefully at some point we won't have 84 year old presidents. We will have someone in the 50s or 60s, like a, a DeSantis type character that's like efficient, straight yeah. to the point, blunt, whatever. I That would be my happy, happy, happy time. Yeah. If someone like. A young guy like DeSantis came in. And like Sean in, Whalen. I would love, obviously, for a lot of reasons if Sean Whalen did it. Uh, or when Sean Whalen does it. Bingo. Having someone go out there and actually do that and ha- be in their 50s and 60s and actually like be act like a CEO and bring in, I mean, you could change not just the country, but the world. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. Just by changing the things that people are like, oh, we can't change that. Think you, about, you do it and then they see it. Think about how much has changed. 10 years ago, what would happen if you smoked weed somewhere? Oh, dude, you're, you're toast. Right? You're going straight to jail. For 20 years, 10 right. years, blah, blah, right. blah. Now, the, every billboard, the only reason billboards still exist in America is because the cannabis companies yeah, bottom all. CBD. <laughs> right? CBD and cannabis bottom all. Think about sports betting. Yeah. What would happen if you and I did a sports bet six years ago? Oh, now, now everybody's got one. They Paul have Brothers it, got them. And the DraftKings is set up inside of stadiums now. Yeah. They have an actual betting arena inside right. of the stadium. Like, the, And now... People think it's normal. Right. Right. Smoking weed is normal. Right. Mushrooms is normal. CBD is normal. Sports betting is normal. Like, because the rationale is slowly starting to happen, people are starting to realize it. But a business person like Sean Whalen or DeSantis comes in, all of a sudden, you can have efficiencies much faster. And if you can get rid of old rules or bad rules that try to come in, you clean things up real fast. Yeah. And the efficiency, like, Right now, this is the one, I actually have something that bothers me a lot. Ready? We go and waste billions of minutes a year taking off our shoes at the airport. Mm -hmm. 21 years ago, a guy failed a shoe bombing. It didn't even work. And 21 years later, they're still winning because because of the way TSA is set up. We waste billions of minutes a year and we waste billions of bottles of water a year. Yep. Nobody has brought nitroglycerin in their Fiji water. But I really do think, though, it's sa- it keeps us much safer when the mom has to take out the breast milk and they have to test it. I do feel a lot safer right. when that happens. Oh. You guys feel safer when that happens? Yeah, me too. The amount of time <laughs> wasted on that is staggering. Yeah. Staggering what happens when just the simple process of taking on shoes, putting on shoes. People mm-hmm. are like, oh, that only takes 30 seconds or a minute. There's 55 million flights a day. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about 55 million interactions twice per day, 110 million times a day, people are taking off their shoes. You might think, oh, it's easy. I'm 36 years old. What about the 80 year old and the 70 year old and the 60 year old and the 50 year old and the 12 year old and the 40 year old? They take 15 minutes to go through TSA. Right? Yeah. For what? Right. And then when you start to think about the billions of minutes that are wasted, how many more staff are there to deal with someone to make sure you take off your shoes, throw away your bottles of water. Yeah. Take your laptop out of your bag that we can already see through. Right. Like, no, no, no. We need you to get it out. We can see through your bag, but we want you to take the laptop out and, of the bag. And move it to the exact same yeah. spot. Onto the exact and same do the hokey pokey and, and, and touch your head around. and grab your balls at the same time. It makes us feel way safer. And so hopefully someone like Sean Whalen comes into the play. And hopefully it is Sean Whalen himself and takes away these inefficiencies yeah. because the billions of minutes saved for the shoes yeah. and the bottles of water and the inefficiencies for permitting it in cities and counties. It, it streamlines our country to be the best country in the world. Yeah. What do you think we have to do to do that? Is the country ready for that? Is America ready yeah. for that? I agree. Yeah. I actually agree. I think we are. I think we as a collective are ready if for it. If you would ask me that in 2021, I would have said no. Yeah. Because we were still listening to that guy. Right. But in 2022, when people started to hear him. And I don't know if this makes yeah. sense anymore. This last three or four months when people started to finally realize, wow, when they're starting to see Elon put out the Twitter files and like, whoa. Yeah. And you saw just a few days ago all the Twitter executives get ripped to shreds by the government officials. Oh, yeah. That was amazing. Like seeing the truth come out uh, across the board on so many different things. 
even the naysayers that used to talk crap to you all the time and yell at Andy all the time mm -hmm. are now, what can they say when yeah. they're starting to hear about all these things and they're seeing- It's like I told you so. Yes. You know what I mean? What do you, what do you think has to happen to get to that? Besides having a fuck ton of money, because at the end of the day, like we both know- What happens to you to be president? Yeah, what has to happen? So the way people win is three things. The way someone wins presidency. One, it is a fuck ton of money because it's very expensive to yep. battle with the other people. Two, it's a lot of humans. There's a lot of favors and handshakes and knowing people, connections, etc. That can be fixed by hiring the people that did it already. The people that have helped get the Trumps and Bidens and Clintons, etc. elected, those guys are out there. There was that show called Scandal. It was a great TV show for years. It's one of my favorite shows, actually. And the girl on there, she was like the press and the protector of all the presidents. Um, some twist because she kept sleeping with the presidents too. But anyway, it was... Uh, <laughs> and Monica Lewinsky, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Clinton's still famous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, people still like that guy. But yeah. the point of that is there are people to hire, the campaign managers right. that are out there that know how to do that. and They know the levers to pull in the games to play. Right. And the agency that helped get some of these presidents elected, obviously Grant Cardone always interviews that guy at 10X that did it for Trump. Um, so a ton of money, relationships, but those can be bought through hiring the right people. And third is having the right messaging for the public, not just in America, overseas, because they talk too, and what they get influenced by. And what they care about is much simpler than people think. All right. They want to know that they're going to make money, be able to save money, and protect their family and their households. All right. They, want, they don't want to know or be scared that bread's going to be three times more and eggs are $7 and milk is $4, like, and gas is $4. That's insane. Like, those are the things that they're afraid of. And so if their fears can be calmed, can be calmed down, and someone can get the relationships and hire all the right staff to do it and has the bankroll to handle it, they don't have to have a bigger bankroll than the other person. Mm -hmm. They just have to have a bigger bankroll to handle all of this. Right. And if they do that, because... When people say, oh, that guy spent uh, 900 million, this guy only has 400 million. Yeah, a lot of their money is wasted. Sure. Sean Whalen spending 400 million versus a billion, I'll bet on Sean. Yeah, well, every, Trump spent like $100 million less than Hillary did. $150 million less than Hillary did. The efficiencies of spending the money right. of a business guy versus right. her is going to be night and day. Do you know what's crazy, though, is you're saying it? Because I'm on the same page with you. I believe it. If you really think about it, like, you know a lot of wealthy people. Like, if you think about the last three presidents have spent on average about $520 million on their campaigns collectively or, or individually, yeah. right? But that's what they've each, the average. If you think about it, it seems like a lot of money, but that's not a lot of money. No. That's really not that much money. No. You go to a couple billionaires and say, throw in 100 million, 100 million, you're there, yes. right? And those guys yeah. with the right team, the right effort, the every, right thing. Every, every dinner you throw, you make one to three million. That's not hard to do, Every right? 10K, 25K dinner. Like it really, I truly, truly, truly believe I have more optimism than I've ever had that we're on that path. And I think as Malcolm Gladwell talked about in the tipping point, he talks about how the pendulum swings. And the pendulum has been swinging for 50 years in this you know, you guys are peasants, sit down, quiet down, slow down, take the jab, do the deal, blah, 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 blah. More IRS, more tax, more money, where I think technology is actually swinging back the other way, where it's giving people access right. to Awareness. secretly, they're kind of looking at these things, they're sitting on the shit or reading these articles going, yeah, why are all of these young football players dying? Why is this happening? It's kind of like, even if you're not on board yet, right. talking about it on social, <clears throat> I truly believe like in the core of man right now that there's probably more people going... I don't know that this deal is the right deal. Yep. I don't think we're headed in the right direction. And I truly believe like we're not that far off from a Paul Revere riding into town going, all right, look, I don't look like him, smell like him. I'm not 80 years old, but here's the deal. Yep. Here's exactly what I'm going to fucking do. And it's going to be hard. It's going to take a shit ton of work to go to a flat tax. Everybody's going to laugh at me. But anybody that laughs at me wants you to stay a slave. But right. here's how it's going to work. If you could really create a, 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 a clear and concise and crafted message that people can actually digest, that they can take and, and vibe with and know that it can help them, I actually think it can be done. I truly believe it can. There's another big thing that I forgot to mention that has to be fixed is the IRS. Oh, without, flat tax, you only need a couple of people. It's, Here's your flat tax, done and done. Is it there? Yes or no? Boom, you need 25 people to work in the fucking IRS. There, it's absolute insanity that the general public has to guess how much they pay. Mm-hmm. And if they overpay, then the government keeps it. If they underpay, they get in trouble. If they pay incorrectly, they can go to jail. Isn't that wild? 
it's absolute insanity, mm -hmm. especially on money that's been taxed four or five times prior to that even being the scenario. Flat tax solves it all. And so having, and it's not even as much as the percentage of how much people pay, because obviously people are paying it and they're willing to pay it. They would pay it if they also knew that their city was safe. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of police. There was a great amount of fire department. They're, totally. They're, the holes weren't on the roads. Like people would pay it. They would pay 30, 40, 50% they had to uh, for a good space and a good place. But the inefficiency of the actual fact that rich people have to figure out all these different tricks and loopholes mm -hmm. to not pay as much tax is insane. Right. We don't have to fight the game if you just make it simple for everyone that you know how much we deposit in our bank or how much we make in our business. And in general, we have some flat number. That's what we pay. Right. That's it. The games go away. The fancy accounting goes away. And it repatriates bazillions. I don't even know what the number is back right. into America because we don't have to hide it by putting it in all these random countries. We so, know what time it is, cuz. Don't fucking I, try and loop I, me in. I, the I, I, put him, I made him do I, that. I know. You're not, you're, not, you're not the security bodyguard right now. I'm in charge, motherfucker. I know um, what time it is. <laughs> Murph. The, I love Murph. I, I forced him to do that. I know you did. I know the game. So... We would repatriate hundreds of bazillions of dollars back in America if we didn't have to use Switzerland and we didn't have to use offshore accounts to literally hide our own mm -hmm. money. And the government would, and our country would be so much better suited if that money was here because we'd be investing it here, playing with it here, spending it here, giving it to our children here, inheritance tax here, charity. It would be here. Yeah. And the fact that we have to hide it over there actually makes us lose so much money that there's zillions of dollars being placed into these foreign countries. Completely unnecessary. Why are our, so many of our friends moving to Puerto Rico to avoid, to lower their taxes? Mm -hmm. They wouldn't do that if they were just a simple tax yeah. here. Right. Think about how many zillionaires of our friends are living in Puerto Rico to avoid taxes. Right. How much more money would be made if they paid a, a, a real tax rate yeah. here and simply. And so we waste a lot of time and energy and most for the most part is going after the little people. Yeah. Because the rich people are, don't get caught very much because they're doing it right. Even though it's wrong, they're right. doing it right. Yep. And so a lot of people just don't pay their taxes and then they get in trouble. It's like we're going through the spinning wheel. It's dumb. It, it, it hurts us time wise, math wise, money wise. We don't want the citizens of our country to be scared of making money. Yeah. We don't want them to be like, oh, I should move to another state just so I can save money on taxes. Don't make me kick you out of here, Murph. I'm going to kick Murph out of here in a second. <laughs> He'll get to the airport. We need to make another, two, like, we need to talk more, man. Sunday. We have I'm, lots. Coming back, I'm coming you back are? Sunday. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I need you to think about a couple things. Okay. Number one, because yep. I really wanted to talk to you about the Chinese balloon. Was it from China? So, or, do, or do you want to plan this for Sunday? I, I can talk about it right now really quickly. Okay. I, I think it's... <laughs> Murph. Uh, uh, <laughs> Murph's like, eh. I, I think it's absurd that the balloon was talked about so much and it should have been shot down right away whether it was from china america once we yeah. were nervous about it whether that was some fucking dude in alaska that did his own home project and it got wild and out of control it doesn't fucking matter it doesn't matter it should never have gotten to the public it should have been taken down the second that we thought that's bad mm -hmm. take the bad thing down yep and it's a freaking balloon so you don't have to blow it up you can yeah. just take the bad thing down yeah <laughs> right yeah uh so anything coming over enemy territory or coming over to our civilian territory you just take it down mm -hmm. uh, i think it's insane that we waited and the fucking thing flew across America. I don't care if it was from anyway. I don't even care where it was from. Anyway. The fact that it was like such big a big deal. Yes. Fascinating to me. Yeah. It was socially fascinating. Uh so yeah, that's it. I don't know where it came from. I don't care where it came from. I think that it's just silly that from a the, the farmers should have taken it down. Yeah. The, the military should have taken it down. The police I have the, tons of anyway. guns that they don't shoot that far though. Yeah. Not none of us do. Civilians, unfortunately. Actually, there's probably a handful of dudes that have something that could reach that eye. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, Biden keeps joking about, well, you need an F-16. And I'm like, you don't understand. I go to Google and I Google how to buy an F-16. Yeah. I'll fucking buy an F-16. Yeah. I don't care. And there's a lot of rich guys that will join. We don't know how to fly them, we'll but we'll buy out. a fucking army of F-16s yeah. if that's what we need right. to do. We'll hire ex-military. <laughs> Anything else you want to share? We'll talk again on Sunday. Yeah, I'll see you Sunday. Dan Fleischman, you're a scholar and a gentleman. I love you, man. I appreciate you. You're uh, you Guys, you, if, I'm not even going to tell you where to find him. Just go fucking find him. I would like to also say that subconsciously, I wore this. I didn't even do this because didn't I didn't even plan here. I just, in my bag, I always have this. I when bring I'm, three clothes everywhere I go, and one of them is always this. Because it's a great brand. It, really it stands is. for something. Yeah. We're getting there, man. Yeah. We're getting there. we got a movement. Like, I really do believe that. Like, yeah, it's, it's apparel and there's a business and whatever, whatever, but... 
I can't tell you how many people message me every single day. I was here, I was there, I was here, I was in this plane and that thing. And yep. Madison Cawthorn, uh, Crathorn, Cawthorn, is that how you say his last name? The congressman from, uh, where the hell is he from? My, my brain is totally fried right now. Congressman. I mean, he's like out shooting the other guy in the wheelchair. He's out shooting the other day and has his lines on a sheep shirt on. I mean, Chase is always wearing it down in Puerto Rico and shooting I, guns. I get stuff all the time over it. It's awesome, man. I love it. We're building yeah. something fun. Yeah. You're, you're a scholar and a gentleman. And um, I would really, really, really like to see some more pictures of the aliens. In fact, is Casey coming on Sunday? No. Oh, that's too bad. She doesn't leave the ranch very much. No. She's out there looking for aliens. Is she shooting any coyotes yet? Oh, yeah. Have it's you got them yet? No, I want you to come out. All right, there. I'm bringing the night vision. We're yeah. going to the ranch. All right, guys, everybody, get your night vision. Uh, we're going to Dan's ranch. Yes. I don't know if you want everybody there or not. We it's can cook up some hot dogs and shoot coyotes all night long. Yes, then I'm in. Yes. Done and done. That's what we're going to do. And we're coyotes, gonna, come over. And we're going to look for aliens. And if that's not your jam, well, then fuck off. We don't really care. All right, guys. We'll see you Sunday. Okay, see you. Bye.